Good morning. It is a Saturday morning. We are going to be here a lo- a lo- for a long time today. We are doing my brother's special commission build that I mentioned on previous videos. Uh, first of all, let me just say, if uh, you're watching the channel for the first time, I do a lot of custom PC builds, but I'm just a guy working out of my basement. So if you could please give me a like, I would really appreciate it. If you could sub, that's even better, but I'm not asking for much. Just please take two seconds and click the like button. I would really, really mean a lot to me. So thank you. So anyway, this is for my brother, Phil. This is his new custom build. He decided to do the Ryzen 7800 X3D rough, roughly around the same time I did. So that's the main impetus behind this. We're trying to get more CPU performance. Um, something to know about my brother. Brother, he's a big DCS guy, and his current favorite aircraft to fly in DCS is the AH-64 Apache helicopter. And when he found out that Thermal Take makes this uh, attack helicopter-themed AHT-600 case, I think his fate was sealed. So um, as you can see, Phil has already started to do some case mods. I'm going to let him break those down in detail. I'm doing the PC side of things today, or at least that's my primary responsibility. So I'm going to be talking about the parts. So. Let's start with the CPU. Like I said, this is the a- uh, AMD 7800X3D. Currently, this is like the best gaming CPU money can buy. In terms of just gaming performance, it's better than the 7950X3D. It's better than the Intel i9. It is the best gaming CPU out there currently on the market. Um, it's got uh, eight core, 16 threads. Um, the clock speed itself is a little lower, but as other channels that do research have shown, the, because of the huge 3 dv cache, the gaming performance is exceptional. Now you can see behind the CPU, we've got Phil's old tower. Um, That's here because we're gonna be harvesting some parts out of that. The uh, 1000 watt power supply is in there. The 3090 GPU that's coming with is is in there. And also all of Phil's drives need to be transferred out of there. So those are the things that we'll be primarily focused on first, getting those out of the case. And then we'll work on getting them set up on the new build. Uh, Other parts, we've got a, a Asus X70E plus Wi-Fi tough gaming motherboard. Uh, for just from an aesthetic standpoint, Tough Gaming is very militarist, militaristic, so I think it's a perfect fit for this. It's got plenty of connectivity. The Tough Gaming line focuses on power delivery and quality of parts, so I think that's perfect for what we're looking for today. Um, I've had a Tough Gaming in my old build, as you saw if you watched the previous video. I think it's a great product, so we're going with that. We've got a, is this a 32 or 64 kit? 64. 64 kit of Trident Neo uh, RGB. Or no, is no, it not RGB? RGB? Okay, it's not RGB, but it is a 64 gig kit. Uh, I believe it is. What is our second cast latency? Or yep, third... it's DDR5 6000. Like I said in my previous video, 6000 is about where you to hit diminishing returns for gaming performance on uh, DDR5 on the AMD platform. So that's why we went with that. And uh, also, we've got uh, for our primary cooler this mammoth Arctic uh, Liquid Freezer 2 420. So it's three 140 mil fans, and uh, well, that's going to be our primary CPU cooler. We're going to be putting that right up front behind the cockpit of the build. Um, we've got a few extra peripherals here too for lighting. We've got a Corsair IQ Commander Core XT. That's going to be our primary lighting controller. For uh, lighting devices, we've got a three pack of 120s and a two pack of 140s. And also we've got this really cool IQ uh, lighting strip pack kit. So we're going to be trying to find places in the kit. I think Phil has specific plans on exactly what he wants to put there. Uh, and finally, we've also got a uh, expansion a USB-A uh, connector. Like I said, Phil's big into flight sims. So he's using VR, he's using a throttle stick and rudder pedals. He's got a sim pit with uh, a butt kicker and a few other things. So he needs all the USBs he can handle. So uh, between the motherboard and this seven port, I'm hoping that we'll be able to address all that. Now, uh, the case itself. So like I said, this is the Thermaltake AHT-600. It's a open concept design that's supposed to look like an attack helicopter. And Phil has already gone ahead and done some case mods. And he's going to talk now about exactly what he was doing with this build and, and what the mods he wanted to make. So Phil, all right, take so, it away. <laughs> first of all, have you ever seen uh, an armed aircraft? Uh, on the runway, they have all these red pins on that say remove before flight. So we've got a little uh, aesthetic pin here that says remove before flight. Um, we also got the first air cab. That's probably the most famous Army attack helicopter uh, division patch. On the Apache, it goes a little bit under the nose, but you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, the Apache does have these nose cones that come out, uh, scoops. Um, they're in a little different place, but you know this isn't it. This case isn't built to replicate the Apache. It's just designed like the Apache. And when you start up the Apache, you have a master ignition key that turns on. Now, I wanted to, in the Apache, it's a, the letters are above. Didn't have room to fit them here. 
Um, this switch we plan on hooking it up so that you have to turn the external power on. So this is ground power. Um, in DCS you can use the battery power to turn on your Apache, um, but the battery wear is modeled in game. So if you really want to get sweaty, you can have the ground crew hook you up to external power and then you can start your Apache using that and save your battery. And then in the Apache, there's a green light up APU button. Um, so we're uh, planning on hooking that up so that the, this is an illuminated button. So the plan is um, to wire it so that when you turn the switch on and you push in the APU button, this will illuminate just like in the Apache. And I'm gonna add a cover later, um, like in the Apache. And then once this is on and this is illuminated, then you'll be able to hit the power button on the case. That's the plan. Not sure really how it's gonna go. Seems pretty straightforward to me, the wiring wise, but um, that's we'll see how it goes. Now there were some other parts that aren't here yet today. Do you wanna talk about those at all? Yeah, so I've got an illuminated black back plate for the GPU that is being made for me by a person on Etsy. The uh, concepts look great. I was trying to get it here in time for the build. Unfortunately, it's not here yet. Um, as well as uh, a, lumin or a, a GPU um, support bracket that is also custom um, and a PSU cover that I'm getting made custom made as well. So the PSU cover is going to say... Um, it's going to have the technical name for the Hellfire, which I believe is 114 Hellfire. Um, and that is going to be over the PSU. The support bracket has the main rounds, the 799. Uh, uh, incendiary something? Incendiary. I saw the mock up. Explosive jacket or something yeah. like that. Um, I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Uh, rounds. And that will be RGB as well as a custom picture of an Apache that says AH64D Apache Longbow, and that will be on the back plate for the GPU, which is also custom RGB. So um, those will be added when we get them. Um, so for now, so there'll be an update later once those get in. All right, sounds good. Uh, we're going to get started here. We're going to start clearing this stuff off. And like I said, we're going to start with harvesting the parts we need out of the old computer first. And then uh, we'll start with, uh, uh, we'll probably do another update before we start board assembly. So uh, thanks for hanging out with us today and uh, we'll get kicking off with this.
So our extraction was successful. We've got our two drives out of there. We got my brother's GPU support bracket. We got his two uh, NVMe SSDs and his SATA SSD. Uh, power supply is not pictured, it's behind me. So now we're gonna do uh, board assembly. We're gonna be putting the uh, CPU, motherboard, RAM, cooler together. Uh, I think we're also just gonna do the whole thing on the bracket. That entire bracket assembly comes out of the case. So I think I'm just gonna straight up put it on there. It'll make it really easy to do the test boot. So uh, I think that's what we're headed to next. Um, we'll uh, do the test boot in the furnace room and see how it goes. So as you can see, we've got our CPU attached, our memory, our SSDs are in. We've got the bracket for the cooler set up. So our motherboard is almost ready to go. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to end this episode here. And then in our next episode, you'll see us taking out the uh, motherboard bracket from the case. We'll put the motherboard itself on the bracket. We'll conduct our test boot and we'll keep going. So thanks for watching this episode and we'll see you in the next one.